hello guys let's talk about vectors today so today's question says that the vector equations of two lines l1 and l2 are given by l1 is such that r is equals to 13i plus 4j plus 11k plus lambda into 3i minus 8j minus 6k and l2 is such that r is equals to 5i plus 22j plus 9k plus mu into 7i minus 17j minus 5k. Find a the position vector of the point of intersection of L1 and L2. B the cosine of the acute angle between L1 and L2. So guys, if you are a returning subscriber, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, this is what we do on this channel. It's math time questions and answer. We give you insights on questions that are giving you headache at school. So don't forget to subscribe, like, and share my video. Don't as well forget to comment on the comment section. Leave us with questions that are giving you trouble. And we'll come back to make videos on these questions. This question is actually from Cameroon GC about 2017 and is given to us by one of our subscribers. So without much time to waste, let's see how to handle such questions. So guys, stay with me as we walk you through this video series. Okay, so the solution part of this question is that we are going to look for the position vector of the point of intersection of the two lines L1 and L2 and we know the vector equations of this line and these are lines in three dimension in the i j and k uh, uh, planes yeah so if these lines that we have l1 to be that and l2 to be that and we are looking for the position vector at the point of intersection point of intersection simply means a point where they meet if these two lines meet at that point, then these two lines must be equal at that point. So at that point of intersection, L1 must be equal to L2. So if L1 is equal to L2 at that point of intersection, then the I components of L1 must be equal to the I component of L2 and the J of L1 must be equal to the J of L2 so as K2. So in this case, we are therefore going to equate the I components of L1 to the I components of L2, the J of L1 and J of L2, and the K of L1 and the K of L2. In that case, we are going to have the first equation. When we equate the I components of L1 and L2, we are going to have 13 for L1, 13I, the I component is 13, plus lambda times 3i which will give us 3 lambda i so the i components of l1 will be 13 plus 3 lambda which must be equal to the i component of l2 which is 5 plus 7 times mu 7 mu so 13 plus 3 lambda will be equal to 5 plus 7 mu so in that case we are going to bring like terms together so we'll take 7 mu to meet lambda and we'll take 13 to meet 5 so that the unknowns will be together and the constants will be on one side so if we are taking 7 to the other side of the equation to meet 3 lambda we are going to have instead of plus 7 the sign will change to negative and if we are taking 13 to the other side its sign also will change to negative which will give us a new equation of 3 lambda minus 7 mu is equal to 5 minus 13 and 5 minus 13 is nothing but minus 8 so we'll call this equation our first equation equation 1 so again if we equate um, the j components of l1 and the j component of l2 we are going to have the first j for l1 here is 4 minus because of minus 8 minus 8 lambda and the j component of l2 are 22 minus 17 mu so we are going to equate those two so 4 minus 8 lambda will be equal to 22 minus 17 mu so we are again going to readjust to bring like terms together so minus 17 mu will go to 
meet uh, minus 8 lambda and it changed to positive while 4 will meet 22 to, and changes to negative so we are going to have minus 8 lambda plus 17 mu equals to 22 minus 4 and 22 minus 4 is 18 so we are going to have minus 8 lambda plus 17 mu equals to 18 and then we can call this equation equation 2 when we equate the k components we are going to have for l1 11 minus 6 lambda should be equals to 9 minus 5 mu so we are going to have that to give us 11 minus 6 lambda equals to 9 minus 5 mu if we have this we again we are going to bring light terms together so we are going to have minus 6 lambda plus uh, 5 mu is equals to 9 minus 11 so 9 minus 11 is minus 2 so we are going to call this equation the third equation so you can see that we have three equations with just two unknown lambda and mu equation one equation two and equation three with just two unknown lambda and mu so we can conveniently solve these simultaneous equations to get the values of lambda and mu so you choose any two equations and you solve so i will choose equation um equation one and equation three to solve here you can choose any two equation to solve simultaneously so we are going to notice that when we look at equation one we can multiply uh, 3 lambda by 2 to give us 6 lambda so that the uh, the, uh, the magnitude of the coefficients of lambda will be equal which will be 6 and 6 so in that case we are going to say that we should multiply equation 3 by 1 and equation two by an equation one by two so in this case if we multiply them we are going to form new equations equation four and equation five so if we multiply equation three by one we are going to leave equation three unchanged so we are going to still have that equation as minus six lambda plus five mu equals to minus two and we'll call that equation equation four because we have multiplied it by one although it is unchanged and if we multiply equation 1 by 2 we are going to have 3 times 2 6 minus 7 times 2 minus 14 and minus 8 times 2 minus 16 so we are going to call that equation equation 5 so if we add these two equations we can eliminate a uh, lambda so we are going to add those two equations so if we add them we are going to have minus 6 plus 6 to give us 6 minus 6 which is 0 so lambda is gone so if we add 5 plus minus 14 is going to give us minus 9 mu so it's equals to minus 2 plus minus 16 which is the same as minus 2 minus 16 which is equals to minus 18 so we can divide both sides by minus 9 we divide the right hand side by minus 9 therefore minus 9 goes into itself one time into minus 9 one time and minus 9 into itself one time into minus 18 two times so mu therefore is going to have a value then use this value of mu equals to 2 and substitute into equation 1 equation 2 equation 3 equation 4 or equation 5 in this case we'll decide to substitute this value into equation 4 so let's substitute the value of mu equals to 2 in equation 4 and equation 4 is minus 6 plus 5 into mu equals to minus 2 but mu is 2 so instead of mu we have 2 so in that case we are going to have minus 6 plus 10 equals to minus 2 when we take 10 to the other side of the equation is sign changes from negative to positive uh, from positive to negative sorry so in this case we are going to have minus 6 lambda is equals to minus 12 so we divide both sides by minus 6 and we divide the right hand side to by minus 6 and if we cancel out we we'll realize that lambda is equals to 2 as well so lambda is equals to 2 and mu is equals to 
2. So for the second part of the equation, we are going to look for the cosine of the acute angle between L1 and L2. But are we done? No, we are not done yet. So if we know these values of lambda and mu, we are going to substitute them into L1 and L2 and simplify. And the vector that we will get for L1 must be equal to the vector of L2. And this common vector at the point of intersection, we call it the position vector of the lines at the point of intersection. So how do I mean and how do we go about this? So we are going to have L1 is equal to that. And for this L1, we have lambda to be 2. So anywhere we see lambda here, we put 2. So we are going to have 13i plus 4j plus 11k plus 2 instead of lambda into 3i minus 8j minus 6k. So in order to simplify, we can now bring the values of i and the j's together and the k's together to have a common i, j, and k. So in this case, we are going to have uh, r is equals to 13i plus 4j plus 11k plus 6i minus 16j minus 12k. So we are going to have r1 is equals to 13i plus 6j we add them right so that will give us 19i and 4 plus minus 16j that will give us minus 12j then the last part 11k minus 12k will give us minus k so that is r1 and for l2 we are going to have L2 is such that 5i plus 12j plus 9k plus mu into 7i minus 17j minus 5k. But mu is uh, 2 as well. So we are going to have this to be 5i plus 22j plus 9k plus 2 into 7i minus 17j minus 5k. So if we open up this bracket, we are going to have that so if we bring like terms together then we are going to be adding 5i plus 14i which will give us 19i and if we add 22i plus minus 32 uh, 34j 22j minus 34j we are going to have minus 12j and 9k minus 10k is going to give us minus k and we see that r1 is equals to r2 so that is the position vector of the two lines l1 and l2 at their points of intersection so we are going to use these position vectors at this point of intersection to calculate the angle of these two lines where they meet so in that case we are going to look for the acute angle the cosine of the acute angle between these two lines so to look for the cosine of the acute angle between these two vectors is giving us the dot product of the two vectors divided by the magnitude of each of the vector so in this case the vectors are transformed into r1 and r2 and we know that what the dot product of these two vectors will therefore be r1 dot r2 divided by the magnitude of r1 times the magnitude of r2. So the cosine of that angle can be gotten after getting the dot product. So to get the dot product of any vector simply means that what we multiply the i by the i components plus the j by the j plus the k by the k component. So we are going to have 19 times 19 plus minus 12 times minus 12 plus uh, minus 1 times minus 1. So we are going to have 19 dot 19 plus minus 12 dot minus 12 plus minus 1 dot minus 1 to give us R1 dot R2 equals to 19 times 19 is 361, 12 times 12 is 144, 1 times 1 is 1. We have they are positive because minus times minus is positive and minus times minus here to is 
positive so we are going to have the dot product of r1 and r2 is going to be equals to 506 therefore we can look for the magnitude of r1 and the magnitude of r2 to compute the dot product of uh, to compute the cosine of the angles between these two vectors so in this case we are going to have the magnitude of r1 will be equal to the square root of the i component plus the square root of the j component plus uh, the k component squared so we are going to have the i component uh, is 19 for r1 so we square it plus the j component is minus 12 squared plus the k component is minus 1 squared so in this case we are going to have this at that point therefore we are going to compute them to have the magnitude of r1 to be square root of 361 plus 144 plus 1 and that is nothing but 506 so the magnitude of r1 is equals to square root of 506 but since r1 is equal to r2 we don't need to compute the magnitude of r2 so we can just conclude that the magnitude of r2 is as well square root of 506 right the same working follows so the cosine of the acute angle between them which we call cos theta is equal to r1 dot r2 over their magnitudes so we are going to have the cosine of the angle between them cos theta equals to the dot product is 506 and the magnitude of r1 is square root of 506 times the magnitude of r2 is the square root of 506 so if we multiply the square root of 506 times the square root of 506 we are going to have 506 so cos theta will be equal to 506 divided by 506 therefore cos theta will be equals to 1 and that is what they are asking us to look for they didn't ask us to look for the angle the angle of the that is formed between r1 and r2 they ask us to look for the cosine of the angle so we'll end there but if they ask us to look for the angle then we we'll say that theta will be equal to the cos inverse of 1 but the question says we should look for the cosine of the angle so we end there so guys that's how we handle questions like this stay with me and if you have any problem leave your comments on the comment section and before you know it i'll be there for you bye bye